Is there accumulating evidence that it was a lab leak? I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it. Disinformation and misinformation is the bona fide enemy of public health. There's no doubt about that. So if the two possibilities are somebody was working on something in the lab and it leaked out versus a natural occurrence where an animal that was infected and when the animal-human interface in the setting of a wet market, a la in Wuhan, it jumped species, infected a few people, and then it spread from there. So if those are the two possibilities and you don't definitively know which it is, it's absolutely essential to keep an open mind. And for those of you who have seen me on television or heard me on radio, you always say, if you don't know definitively what it is, you have to keep an open mind. It could be one or the other. But having said that, you can't close your mind to accumulating evidence because just because something is possibly this and possibly that does not mean they're equally probable. So you ask yourself, what is the data for a lab leak? And the answer is the circumstance that it happened to arrive, arise, this outbreak, in a city that had a lab that people were studying. What is the evidence that anything leaked? None, zero. Circumstantial evidence. Does that mean it didn't happen? No, could possibly happen. Then you turn the page and you say, we know nothing is definitive, but what is the evidence that went way a bit that it was a natural occurrence? And then you have very qualified evolutionary virologists who have studied very carefully from an epidemiological, a virological, and the geospatial uh, standpoint, the market itself, and have come to the conclusion that it is strongly suggestive that it was a natural jump. Not definitive proof, suggestive. Then as Jim points out, just this past month, a study came out that showed that when they examined the swabs, the environmental swabs in the market, they found the DNA of animals, wild animals, raccoon dogs and others, that should not have been in the market. They were illegal because of the prior experience with 2002 that you don't want those animals and mixed up with the DNA of the animals was the RNA of the virus, which doesn't definitively prove, but suggests that there were infected animals in the market. Doesn't prove it, and you've gotta keep emphasizing that because the people who feel very strongly one way or the other will always push back. We don't know, and that's the reason why I and my colleagues keep an open mind that it could be one or the other. But as a scientist, I can't ignore accumulating evidence that's suggestive but not conclusive. And is there accumulating evidence that it was a lab leak? I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it. You haven't seen it? No, the Department of Energy came out with a statement a bit ago that with low confidence, they think it might be a lab leak. And what did you think? I have no idea what low confidence means. <laughs> it's not high confidence. <laughs> There's low confidence and there's high confidence. <laughs> but I think one of the problems, and I, I, I promise I'm gonna turn it over to Hugh here in a second. One of the problems that we have, I, this is my problem as a journalist, too many questions. <laughs> um, but one of the problems that we've seen in, in our society throughout this pandemic is, you know, folks are getting their information from all kinds of different places now. And so people will listen to a podcast that says you should take ivermectin uh, for COVID and so on, that had to have, again, another medication, there isn't any scientific data that says, oh, this works. Um, no, no medical agency or scientific agency from the US government has come out and said, oh yes, you should use ivermectin. In fact, they're all saying, don't do that. Um, but what do you do about, and what did you, I don't know, what, what were you up against in terms of dealing with disinformation throughout the pandemic when we were dealing well, with it. Well, 
disinformation and misinformation is the bona fide enemy of public health. There's no doubt about that. And the real problem that we face is that we are living in an arena, and I think everybody in this audience, regardless of what your, your opinions are, you have to realize that there's a lot of untruths out there. There's a lot of distortions and misinformation and disinformation that gets totally amplified by the social media. So since people can say things regularly and accepted, that you can say whatever you want and put it on a social media, if you just disseminate it enough, people are gonna believe it. And that's when you had situations where people say this drug works and there's no evidence or any data to say it works. Well, I heard it from this person who heard it from that person who heard it from that person, therefore it works. And that's exactly what happened with some of the drugs that you mentioned. Uh, and unfortunately, if that occurred in a vacuum, then it would be kind of strange, annoying, and, 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 and unfortunate. But when that leads people to not get the proper medication or the proper care, then it causes lives to be lost. And that's the thing that disturbs us in the public health. Because somebody's lying or somebody's spreading false information or tweeting whatever they're tweeting, who cares? But when it interferes with the health of another person, then it becomes critical. 